My guest today is intelligent, charismatic, and wholeheartedly pan Africanist. Welcome, Kanisa. <laughs> Say something. <laughs> He, he haven't said anything. <laughs> so you are the director of, um, is it pronounced Echelon? Echelon. Echelon. Yes. The Echelon Group. Mm -hmm. An advisory and investments company, is that correct? Correct. Um, plus other diverse uh, interests. Tell me more about your role and your vision for the group. Well, I'm the founder of Echelon Group. It's an investment and um, advisory firm um, formed in 2012 with um, the aim to mainly offer advisory services to governments and municipalities. Some of the projects that I've done is, you know, to do strategies um, for some of our local municipalities and also um, advise governments in terms of um, service delivery issues, um, conduct monetary and evaluation projects. Um, for also some of the big programs that have run across the continent. I see you say uh, for some of our governments, in which or how many countries do you work in Africa? I've worked pretty much um, in South Africa. In South Africa. I've worked in East Africa. Mm -hmm. I've worked in West Africa. East is what is um, Kenya, is, Uganda, it's, it's, and it's Tanzania. Uganda. Mm -hmm. I've worked in Uganda. Um, do you work in Zimbabwe? Um, yes, I do. You do? I do. I Why do you agree with that chuckle? Well, because, <laughs> <laughs> because you have personal interests in some purpose, your hopes so. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, yes, I have done, you know, some interesting work. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, you know, around Pan-Africa. Yes. And I think maybe that's why you call me a Pan-Africanist. Pan-Africanist, yes. Yeah. Yes. But it's incredible, even your, 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 your language from the time I think I've known you now for about seven years Correct. since you started going up north you know in africa your language your dress code your gestures you know everything you know now is aligned into you know being african true i i've, I've come to really appreciate bright colors um i was quite a conservative dresser um from a consulting background um i've worked for companies such as deloitte and when you and banks, you know, and um, when you're out there, they, the, the dressing is more, you know, conservative. So the freedom of owning my own business mm -hmm. and doing projects where I'm the pioneer, I'm the boss. <laughs> Just brightens so up the I, spirit. So I can wear what I want, <laughs> you know, except pajamas, obviously. But, you know, it gives me that freedom. And I feel, you know, my creative side has really come out. And um, yeah, I've, 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 my accent has changed a bit. Uh, yes. <laughs> it has changed a bit. We are talking to Kanye Satefo <laughs> of Echelon. I got it right? Yes. Echelon. Okay, we'll be right back. Welcome back. Now, madam, your company has worked with organizations in the public and private sector, um, optimizing them for success. Is this correct? Yes, it is. All for failure. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're already successful companies. So it's, it's pretty hard, you know, to bring them down. So okay. Down. So which sectors would you say um, government or the private sector, you know, should be paying more attention to? I think, look, it, it, everything revolves around money. You know, um, young people, um, people, you know, and, and, and citizens, they are full of ideas. Someone just sent me a message to say, please ask Ms. Tefo to speak up. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, you know, they are full of ideas, mm -hmm. but no financial backing. This is government? No, this is individual. The private I'm sector. I'm talking about sectors okay. that um, private sector and government need to focus on is to develop our financial sectors um, in this country and you know, on the continent. Um, in terms of funding, funding availability, access to finance, you know, for even small businesses. I think those are sectors that um, one needs to pay attention to because when you look at South Africa, South Africa, we have our infrastructure is quite developed, um, well, compared to the rest of the continent. But our, and, and as much as in other countries, more the infrastructure that needs to be developed. But in South Africa, the financial services sector, 
I think that's where the focus needs to be, where we, uh, where there needs to be access to funding for you know small business development, even medium business development, mm. and I think that will really fuel the economy. Mm. Would you say that uh, there is a rationality in this development <clears throat> when you look at the urban areas and the rural areas? And I'm not only talking about South Africa, I'm talking about uh, Africa in the countries you know, that you work in general. Um, please contextualize the, the rationality. So the development that you refer to mm -hmm. and the availability of resources and the ability of the different uh, institutions you know, to be availed of financing. Would you say there's a rationality whether these enterprises are urban based or rural based? They both, I mean, um, in, in the South African context, they, it's across the board. Um, if you go to a rural community, you'll find that there's a cooperative there that needs funding. You go to the urban areas, there's an established company that cannot access funding for growth. Mm. You know, so I would say that the rationale would be across the board. And your advice? My advice to who specifically? To uh, the people seeking uh, developmental finance. Um, well, developmental finance is mainly, well, it, how I'm understanding it. Yes. It, it, it pertains to infrastructure and that's mainly municipalities and government that have ex that need access. Even working, even working capital. Working capital, mm -hmm. yes. But I think what's important is for businesses to prove themselves, you know, um, and, and 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 you know, one cannot want funding for a project of a hundred million when you haven't even managed one million rents. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that that. Um, step-by-step -step approach to business is very important. It's, more, it's a more realistic view because you can meet someone who has never ever even managed you know serious funds and they want to go into this major major business. I think let's let's learn to also start small, grow these um, entities. I mean we look at big big companies that are out there like Coca-Cola, they started somewhere. They started so what do they say in Swahili if you want to say Ambakashe? What is what do they say in Swahili? In Swahili? Mm. <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, I thought you were spending a lot of time in uh, East Africa. We're talking development with uh, Kanyisa. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Makamba Life. Now, you, you, um, you're an university graduate. Okay. okay. Is there any difference? I mean, you have people like um, Richard Branson who never went to university, of Bill Gates who left university, found it boring. What, what is your experience? How do you equate education and success in business? I think what education has done for me and the ability to actually sit in one place and take instruction, you know, and cram a couple of you know, theories in my head and then sit down at exams and write it. It's, it's taught me um, first of all, to create a structure, a working structure, a working method. Um, it's also taught me to, to, to you know, um, I think also my speaking skills um, involved, um, improved quite um, drastically because I was a very, very shy child. You still are very shy. <laughs> well, you still are shy, maybe not very shy. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm and and you shy. you uh, studied with an Australian institution. Yes, in South Africa. The Bond University. Correct. Sir. Was this owned by Alan Bond, the Australian entrepreneur? Um, no, it's you not don't sure. know. I, I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure actually. I know that it was part of the Advertech Group in South Africa. Okay. Um, but I'm not sure who the actual owners were. And when you talk to uh, students who went say to. The University of Ghana, uh, University of Zimbabwe, Cape Town University, and about the culture um, of these universities. How did you feel you had an edge over your fellow, um, your friends, your other students who went to these institutions I'm, I'm mentioning? Well, um, our campus was right in the heart of Sandton. Um, within the business districts, I mean, the projects that we had, we had, we would go and, you know, um, shadow people at Investec, you know, real companies. Mm. So I think going to a metropolitan university gave me that real life experience mm -hmm. that, you know, I'm not still in boarding school because I also grew up in boarding school. Mm. And 
I want, I, and, and the good thing about, and we also had a lot of, um, you know, charity work, so that's why I also learned to have like, you know, corporate investment, what it involves, also engaging with corporates, and it started early, I mean, adversity. We we're already presenting, talking to MDs, talking to CEOs, and also the network that, that was, that I created from school, I'm still benefiting from that network. Yeah, and your family um, runs uh, all owns um, an NGO? Correct, yes. Okay. It's called Dimponyana Zalabim. Uh -huh. We have, um, it's a place of safety for vulnerable children and women. It's out in Midrand and we basically take... It's in a place called Midrand, Midrand. in South Africa. Yes, Midrand. For the benefit of those that yes, don't live Midrand, in South Africa. Midrand, South Africa. Yes. Um, part of Gauteng. And we take in children, South African children, we take children that are from outside. Um, that have obviously been vulnerable and you know it, it, it's been a gratifying journey I mean that um, we've been running now for about 12 years my younger sister <laughs> I hope you'll have on the program one of the days she's mm -hmm. the MD she's running it um, full-time she gave up her you know corporate but your mother started it yes she started okay. it um, so you know it, it, it's I mean we have about 40 children that, well done. Well that done. live with us and you know, it's, 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 it's so gratifying to see some of these kids go up to university. Yes. And it's been, you know, that, that sort of tradition that it's a come in, go out institution <laughs> and be somebody out there. Mm. Tell me, would you say there's a commonality uh, in challenges that face, you know, women in most of African countries um, where you work or there are specific programs, for, I mean, problems and challenges for each of the countries? Is there a common thread that runs through? Okay. Um, in my personal experience, I was only reminded I was a woman in a in a in a in a very in West Africa, in in, in Senegal to be specific. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I think also that's because the, the you know the country is 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 it's, it's a bit conservative, you know, in my view, but. Other countries I've worked in, I've always worked as an equal peer, you know, amongst um, my colleagues that I work with. Mm. Um, and, you know, I've, I've, in each country, obviously, um, you have to sort of adjust and do what the Romans do. You know, if, 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 if people or women dress in a certain way, just follow. It doesn't cost you anything than mm -hmm. to go in with tight jeans, you know, and just offend okay. everyone. <laughs> <laughs> We, we are talking about doing business in Africa with uh, Tefo Kanyise. We'll be back. We're talking to Kanyisa Tefo. I, I'd almost forgotten to ask her about her other side. She um, also delves in uh, religion. Uh, the born again Christian and pastor. Am I correct? Yes. Tell us a little about that. Oh, wow. Well. Okay, I was um, ordained as a pastor in 2015, yes, and I'm not so practicing as a pastor. I do more marketplace ministry, which involves um, ministering in corporates, because you have corporates where, like the hotel groups, where the staff cannot go to church and therefore get invited to come and minister, give a word of exaltation to, um, you know, their staff. So I've really enjoyed that, and I do have like um, fellowship that yes. you know, I'll just have a few people that I'm in, and also minister to individuals. And your husband is a pastor as well? <laughs> no, sir. Whoa. Is he atheist? Um, he's a Christian. He's a Christian. Yes. Mm. Well done. Tell me very quickly as we as we wind up. Uh, you come from quite a large, diverse family. Um, how do you get along as a family? What has been your experience? of growing up in a large family and working together? Yeah. It's a, it's a, I come from a very blended family. Mm -hmm. um, Explain blended. I have nine siblings. Mm -hmm. um, out of the nine siblings, there are four mothers and one father. Wow. Yes, and a stepfather. Wow. So, yeah. <laughs> so I have a stepmother, a stepfather. So I've got four sets of parents. Wow. And it was such a blessing. You're lucky. Oh, no, totally. I'm totally <laughs> you can never run out of advice. I'm completely spoiled. Eh? Spoiled, spoiled, spoiled. I have that. I have stepsisters. 
I have half siblings, mm -hmm. I have direct siblings, and it's a very interesting family tree. You all get along? We get along, some of us. Some of Look, you fight? I mean, with any family. Yes. Yes, as at a particular point, these, this group is ganging against another one. Mm. And it also doesn't go according to blood. <laughs> yes. Because you find me, you know, and, and, but I've always maintained, um, you know, peace amongst all my siblings as the eldest daughter in the family. I've always, I have my relationship with each and every one of my siblings. Yes. Yes, but you know, you find some things, you leave them to time. I think with every family, prayer is very important. You know, to 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 maintain unity yes. in the family because I believe when families are united, there's great success in that. Fantastic. For the benefit of our um, viewers, I always want to know uh, and learn what uh, our guest's philosophy of life is. What have you learned about life? I think. You can, you, can, you can tell our viewers, look yeah. them in the face and, and tell them. I think our inability to wait um, is the cause of many of our problems. Well, problems that I've experienced in my personal life, in my business life. And I've also learned that business um, needs a lot of wisdom. Um, you know, because when you enter into business and you're not quite ready to go into business, you... You know, you incur a lot of problems. You know, it comes, there's this heavy price to pay to go into business. Um, you must be prepared to lose stuff, you know, material stuff. You must be prepared to walk that walk. You must be prepared to, to live the faith walk when it comes to business. Um, many think that you can just resign from a 50,000 rents a month job and then suddenly you're going to be in business and then you'll be earning 400,000 a month. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. Can you say you, you, you've been wonderful. Thank you very much for joining us on Makamba Life. And I wish you luck. I wish you success. And please take my regards to your family. Thank you, okay. sir. We'll see you next time on Makamba Life. Goodbye. <laughs>